Presenting to you Green Tea with Zaki, a chit chat with some of Smart Cube's most celebrated people who have explored, evolved, and emerged into leaders, influencers, and champions in their roles. I am excited to play host with such extraordinary people who have done everything they can to build a name for themselves at Smart Cube and also build Smart Cube in the process. Stay tuned for Green Tea with Zaki and follow us on this evergreen journey with the extraordinary people of Smart Cube. Welcome back to the fourth episode of Green Tea with Zaki. Today we have with us a dynamic individual who dared to step out of line and challenge the status quo of standing in queues. A visionary who wanted consumers to skip to the good part, or should I say, the food part. Today is with us is an individual who is none other than Krishna Wage, the CEO and co-founder of SmartQ. Welcome, Krishna, to the fourth episode of Green Tea with Zaki. It's a privilege and honor to skip the queue and chat with you, considering the number of people waiting in line to get to you. <laughs> Thank you, Zaki. <laughs> so, uh, Krishna, it's, a, it's really a great pleasure to have you and thank, thank you for taking your time to do this with us. Uh, let me give you some context with Green Tea with Zaki. So, we started this whole series to celebrate the people of SmartQ who have been there, done that and have achieved a lot of success over multiple years. So, after the first episode with Bhaskar, the first demand that came up is, when are we doing it with Krishna? <laughs> so, that just shows that how much we want to celebrate this individual who has been and part of this journey for the past seven years and has done an incredible job in getting smart you this far and allowing us to be a part of this journey and be a part of your vision as well. So, thank you for that again. Thank and, you, Zaki. Yeah. And we'll begin your interview finally. So, it's going to be two segments and with you, we have invented a third segment, which is an activity that will be a surprise to both of us. So, the first two segments is what we will start with and get underway with. So, uh, beginning with the questions then, Krishna. Sure. So, the first question is, I was watching an interview of yours quite recently where you said you were made to stand in a queue for 35 minutes to get to an express combo meal. So, I'm just trying to understand what if it wasn't an express meal and a regular meal? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Did the word express make you think like, what is this? I'm, it's an express meal and it's 35 minutes. How does it all tie? I'm just trying to understand what if it was not an express meal that day and it was just a regular meal? Um, I'm not sure if uh, Smart Q would have been there. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I, I think... Uh, so, actually what happened, Zaki, was that when I went to Manita Tech Park Food Court, um, there was like massive queues everywhere. There was a mad rush of yeah. people everywhere. Yeah. And uh, I was like, okay, what is that I can get really quick? Yeah. So when I was scanning all the menus, I saw this Chungwa's menu which mm. said Express Combo Meal. <laughs> it caught my eye, okay. right? And I said, okay, Express Combo Meal, everything is ready. They just need to put it on the plate and give it to me. How much time is it going to take yeah. anyway? Yeah. And that's how I stood in the queue. Ah. And it still took 35 minutes. That's insane. I mean, <laughs> Were, were you working in a Manita, Manita tech park before? So, like, my previous startup, Adding Value, uh, we had taken exclusive rights of advertising in no. all of these IT parks, food courts, and we used to put up signages and you know hoardings and stuff like that in these uh, food courts. So, I was right there, uh, okay. you know, and, uh, and I was getting some work done, I was getting some installation done. And uh, uh, and that's where the lunch time was there, okay. so I was also hungry. So that's how the whole thing happened. That's insane, incredible. Did you say it was Chungwa restaurant? Yeah, Chungwa. I think we are. <laughs> we should thank Chungwa for having an express combo meal on their menu. <laughs> <laughs> if not, we might have not had Smart Q, and Krishna might have ended up having a regular meal that day, and might have continued on his journey on adding value. So thank you, Chungwa. Thank you for having express combo meal on that, and. Thank you for taking that express combo meal so seriously and wanting to change the whole system of how things work. Amazing Krishna, that's brilliant. That's It's so happy to know that that really inspired you. You just spoke about adding value as a company. So, we all interested to know that you had a successful venture in adding value and you could have continued that journey and grown it to where it could have been. So, did you have to sacrifice a lot of your success and the whole need and the belief that came in because of that incident to actually take it up as a challenge, let go of the success you had created and start smart you. How did that all tie up? Good question, Zaki. It's going to push me to the memory lane of mine. Um, so, adding value, uh, the year I left adding value uh, was the best year of adding value, right? Uh, which was 2014, 2014-2015. Uh, we did about 5 crores of business, wow. right, with about 20-25% profitability and only 2 partners in the business, right. Um, so, we did, that was a fabulous year of ours, right, the best year so far, 5 years of our journey. Uh, in 
in 2013 12 2012 2013 um, i was caught with this whole fascination around technology mm. and um, i saw steve jobs as a very big inspiration for me okay i started following him following him uh, following him very religiously right. and i started to understand how technology can really shape everyday lives of uh, all of us right and technology can really have a very massive impact and that fascination led me to be very dissatisfied with what we were doing in adding mm-hmm. value i was like you know we are just doing static mm-hmm. media spaces mm-hmm. we should do far more active engagement with the consumers and you know i had some brilliant ideas on how we can engage with the consumers and how we can deliver better value to right. the brands right. and uh, and that's where i met abhishek uh, and uh, abish when i met abhishek it was almost like a um uh, amazing moment where i literally felt that i have got a magic wand in my hand right oh, wow. right and uh, uh, because whatever ideas i was sharing with him that you know hey you know what we can do this and abhishek would come back and say that hey we can do it this way okay. right and i was like we can we do this and he like, yeah this, we can do it this way <laughs> nice. and i am like i have a magic wand in my hand right and that's why i call abhishek as wizard yeah. right um so that's so technology inspired me so much and then having abhishek as my partner um literally made me feel that you know whatever i am doing is not something which i would like to continue doing and i would like to use technology to solve everyday human life problems right and that's how the genesis of smart cube happened and that's what gave me the courage uh, to leave all the success behind adding value and you know continue with a completely uncharted uh, territory like smart cube fantastic krishna that's so brilliant to know uh, wasn't abhishek with you on part of adding value as well or he you met him at smart you went to smart so uh, he was part of adding value innovations so okay. adding value was a media company static media okay. company adding value innovation was all about how can we use technology in media uh-huh. so that we have better engagement with the consumers right, right and we did that for a good amount of time and then we realized that technology should be more utilized for uh, everyday human lives problems Understood. rather than using it for marketing and that's how we started Got off with smart cube amazing krishna that's so, so insightful did know that part of your story and abhishek thank you for believing in krishna and both of you make fantastic partners and it reflects today the vision becoming a reality that thought and that conversation you all had made it a big big venture and a big the uncharted part became more clear and charted as you all progress So that's brilliant and speaking about Steve Jobs as an inspiration Krishna that that's he really inspires me as well and like Steve Jobs says stay hungry stay foolish Krishna didn't stay hungry he ate that express combo meal <laughs> <laughs> and that I guess why had his brain to thinking that probably we could next time when I have this express combo meal it could come much faster to me so he worked on that and that obviously came to right amazing so moving on to the third question Krishna so We've come a long way. Uh, congratulations on the seven-year milestone. That's huge, and the Rishta celebrations were magnificent. Obviously, you have seen the journey up close with people who have been a part of this whole journey till today. So, what when you look back, what would you say some of the most amazing work we've done, and what makes you think like, wow, this was so good, and makes you feel very proud? There are many, Zaki. You no, know, uh, what if you ask me, uh, what is that I'm most proud of? I'm most proud of uh, our people, you know, our team. Uh, if you see the success of all the people who have, you know, joined uh, initially, right? It is so fabulous to see them grow, yeah. right? Like if you see Nitin, Bhaskar, Kiran, you know, Satish, uh, Nikhil, uh, you know, Bhaskar, all of these guys have grown leaps and bounds, yeah. right? And when I look back, uh, I'll be like. wow you know we could really create an impact we could really become a catalyst mm-hmm. into somebody's career growth yeah. right and that is what i am really really proud of yeah. right the second thing i am very very proud of is the way we have scaled our business yeah. right the way we solved the problem of queues yeah. and how we were very very agile enough to be able to pivot the business models you know continue to keep uh, looking at where the problem statements are right. and you know continue to Channelize the energies towards that, yeah. right? We started as a company with the vision of eliminating queues yeah. from the face of this earth. Then and and today, what we do is that not only we solve the queue problem inside these cafeterias, right. but we solve a ton of problems at a 360 degree, yeah. right? So I think uh, it's an extremely proud thing of the way we have solved these problems, Absolutely. how we have innovated, uh, how we have done so many jugards in the <laughs> whole journey, right? 
and uh, and we are we are here right yeah. it's a dream come true moment for all of us amazing uh, of what we dreamt is what we are living the reality today 100% true uh, what krishna just spoke about is agility which is a very big part of our core values and the jugaad thing that he spoke about is thinking hatke i think these two elements along with the other core values obviously have made us come a long way and adopting and adapting to the road that that showed different opportunities and possibilities i think smart you grabbed on to those chances and didn't just stick with uh, with a vision of eliminating queues but grew right. on to that and compounded that result into what we are today right so that's amazing krishna thank you for that answer so moving on to the fourth uh, question krishna you just spoke about a couple of names uh, baska nitin kiran nikhil these folks who have grown tremendously so speaking about the people of smart queue what has been the mantra that has led to such successful employee retention people have been here of 7 years like and people have joined 4 5 years have stuck through and are still believing and going through and hustling it out and working towards a goal how has this been because startups don't manage to do this so easily they kind of crumble and kind of it doesn't work that way how has smart you been able to do that so successfully seamlessly smoothly in retaining people right <clears throat> the real mantra of this uh, retention rate and the happiness we have among our people is comes from the philosophy which we have always uh, believed in right uh, we believe that we are a we are not a hierarchical organization right we believe that we are a music band right and when we talk about being a music band uh, each person in that particular music band is extremely important yeah. the lead singer is not more important than the guy on the piano not the the guy on the piano is not more important than the guy who's there uh, on on the guitar yeah. right yeah. every single person is equally important and what we have done is that we have trusted once we have onboarded somebody onto our music band which is smart queue we have trusted them 100% that they will come through on what they have signed up for yeah. right we trust them 200% mm. and we don't overlook their shoulders every day and try to see are you doing it yeah. not doing it uh, doing micro management we have never done that right yeah. we have trusted the person yeah. and and vice versa those people have trusted the other people and it has built such good harmony inside the organization and between the teams yeah. that all of us are just focused on how can we put up a great show mm. out there yeah. right we have never bothered about internal politics we have never bothered about oh this guy is saying this what is the hidden agenda behind this right mm. because we do not have the baggage of that yeah. you know because we do not have to think twice that oh if zaki has told something to me what is the real intention behind mm. that mm. because we do not have that yeah. politics we do not have that bureaucracy yeah. right it has led to such happy and beautiful culture right and we have attracted more of such people inside the organization that it has had such a big ripple effect that everybody just loves to enjoy to come to office Absolutely. right i will love to come to office because i get to see all of you talk to you guys right it is so much more fun right it's like a family it's like a group of friends working together absolutely right and and that i think is the number one reason the second reason is that we have always believed in uh, making people uh, their passion should be their profession mm. right so if you see right from at a co-founder level itself if you look at uh, keshav Keshav started off with you know sales right yeah. but his real passion was in marketing yeah. we said and at that particular point in time we really didn't even know what marketing can do to yeah. a b2b business yes. we are a b2b yeah. food service business right you know what can marketing do to b2b business we didn't have any idea about it but we still said that you know if you love marketing yeah. you know go ahead and explore marketing right yeah. look at somebody like bhaskar right bhaskar was on ground he used to do promotions from there his interests were lying around hr he did an hr hr work he got into designing he got into marketing right so the reason and we were more than happy for all of these things to happen True. because we really want people to do what they truly love to do right because we ourselves left all our jobs high high paying jobs we left and we started businesses because we wanted to do what we truly love to do Absolutely. right and nothing else right and i think that is the other another philosophy which has worked really really well and people truly love to do what they what they do right yeah. 
I think these are the top two reasons I would say, you know, why we have such great culture, great family out here, yeah. and we have attracted very genuine good people inside the organization. The third thing, I'm sorry, uh, no, uh, I forgot to please. mention. If you see uh, in the organizations, Zaki, you will not find even a single brash leader inside our organization, right? You typically see in corporate companies where you have these extremely brash leaders who are celebrated. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, they are very brash. You know, they can do anything to get to their numbers, Correct. right? To their metrics, yes. right? We do not have even a single person like that inside our organization, right? And that just creates a very beautiful and working environment out here, right? Where people are not trying to climb so-called the corporate ladder. And the good thing is that we never built a ladder inside our organization. We don't have ladder, right? We don't have hierarchies, right? Yeah, we do have positions. Yeah, they're just for the outside world. But inside, we all of us know that there is nothing called you know hierarchy, right? True. So nobody is trying to chase a particular position, okay. right? To dethrow somebody and get to that position. So because we don't have that ladder itself. It's a level playing field for everybody. Absolutely. So I don't see anybody in our organization working for promotion because we don't have a concept of promotion, Correct. right? So yeah, I think these are the three reasons I would say that you know, we have a great culture, we have great team, and we have great people with whom we work. Yeah. These are some fantastic three points you just put 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 down, and I love the analogy of a music band. So we are the same choir singing the same song, and we have the same lyrics with us. Exactly. Nobody singing different songs, and that when it sounds together as one unit, sounds like a great song. Absolutely. And like Krishna said, those three points, and I would echo those those three points as well. Since I have been here for ten months, the first thing we said about the family culture, we where we cohesively work and look not look down on failures, rather we help pick up the other person and see it as a transparency and trust factor that we can do together. And the second angle of passion meeting profession is where. The whole the whole synergy of explore, evolve, and emerge comes into play, where employees are allowed to explore what they like to do and evolve in those roles, and emerge as champions and leaders and influencers in their roles. Which is exactly why we have Green Tea with Zaki to celebrate these people who have gone through that journey. And the eight leaders that we have here are fantastic people, all humble, down to earth, with the goal of doing great things for Smart You and actively listening to things that the employees need around them. So that's fantastic as well. And I've been part of the. Some of these meetings with the eight leaders, especially where we sat down and created the Rishta core values, where we structured everything around the employees first and looked at employees' interests and how that fit into the realm of the company's goals. So totally aligned with what you said, Krishna. That's fantastic, fantastic stuff. Thank you, sir. Moving on to the fifth question. So, Krishna, you started with the vision of eliminating queues, and as time went on, you were with the company was agile enough to adopt and adapt to different solutions. And one such was the merger with Nexta, right. which brought in the food aggregation model. So how do you feel about that when you look back and how do you feel that was a step in a strategic move aligned in today's world how, what if you didn't take that step or what if that merger didn't happen how could things play out differently right um i think if uh, i'm i'm just saying it you know i don't know how hardik and keshav would feel about it but i feel that uh, if smartq and next up wouldn't have merged together i don't think so we would have had smartq you know i'd be very i'm making a very bold statement out here um uh, see because the need of the hour the the solution which is required in the market which is what the clients are looking for uh, at that particular point in time if you look at it there were very few clients who needed technology only as a solution right and uh, uh, and the solution what next up was offering which was food aggregation as a solution yeah. right uh, and in the f- shape and form it was done uh, they could have serviced only few number of clients right yeah. so when when the f- you know four of us basically met you know and we spoke we sp- we spoke about it how technology as a very strong enabler for food aggregation mm-hmm. business can actually help scale the food aggregation mm-hmm. business to massive heights right, right? right. and uh, and and solve a very lot of unique problems for the clients yeah. now both put together became such a powerful solution for the clients uh, that that you know we have been able to dominate the market in like less than 8 months of operations like after post covid you know yeah. in just 8 months of time we have been able to become the most dominant player in the yeah. market yeah. right uh, so yeah i would say uh smart queue and next up i think one of the best decisions we ever took in our lives uh was to merge these two companies together right. and join hands together and and run this business and grow this business together amazing and how did you all meet uh, 
mm. the next up team like did you all have them as a client working or where did this meeting happen was it serendipity that you all just came across and it just worked like magic yeah so uh, i remember uh, uh, hardik once pinged me on linkedin and he said hey you know i run a business called next up and i would like to come and meet you up yeah. and and i immediately responded because i love meeting entrepreneurs you know I, my passion is in meeting entrepreneurs uh so i said yeah why not we should meet up and we met uh, uh at the coffee day on uh, this uh, barton center ah, right mg road yeah. so we met there and then after that keshav also came for that meeting and we had a great meeting right you know they spoke about how they are running their business and i spoke about how smart queue scaling up uh inside the country along with compass group and stuff like that so it was a really good meeting uh and then post that we you know we said that hey you offer food aggregation i offer technology yeah. a lot of clients yeah. are asking for you know a solution which is together, together yeah. so uh, we we worked on a client together uh there was a client called as first american and we worked together on that particular okay. client yeah so that was like a pilot project and the yeah. synergies met in a very yes, positive way that's and right. it went as well that's right amazing that's great to know and so linkedin a linkedin message to krishna which he reciprocated was the journey of two great companies joining hands and my journey at smartview is very similar so keshav had written down a post on linkedin where i sent him a message asking him if i could explore pos- opportunity with smartview so it just proves that if you have the open mind to just ask you might just get what you're looking for so yeah. that's amazing absolutely so krishna this bring me to the last question of the first segment um which is we have achieved so much together uh, and all of us are excited about the road ahead so could you tell us something about the next 3 year plan of tw- vision for 2025 what can we as smart queue employees expect along the road what are the exciting projects we can look forward to uh, for the next 3 years and anything else that you'd like to add in terms of the vision how to change or what could be the major focus areas right um So Zaki what we are trying to do if you see uh, there are two legs of our business right one is the international business where we you know provide our technology and digitize cafeterias across the globe uh, that is the first uh, division of ours the second division of ours is the india business which is the full stack business where yeah. we take care of the food service and the technology requirements of the client right yeah. so the vision zaki uh, the vision is to basically build an app store for institutional food service okay right so we will have these we will basically have these curated uh, food service partners with us mm. these are great entrepreneurs who produce amazing food like some of them has been following recipes from generations together some of them are chefs themselves innovating new food concepts right, right? so we want to democratize that right uh we will basically ha- build an app store equivalent kind of a thing for these curated food partners wow. and we will provide them the guidelines and insights we have got from the industry wow. right so and cool. encourage them to be able to come out with new wacky food concepts right and these food concepts uh, uh you know we will curate those food concepts and provide them the infrastructure to be able to scale their business so let's say if there is a great chef in taj right yeah. uh, you know who is amazing at preparing food coming out with new concepts yeah. so suddenly that guy has an opportunity a platform where we are giving him kitchen as an infrastructure we are giving him logistics as a infra- right. uh, service we are giving him raw materials as a service right. we are offering him gig workers as a service right so we will give him every damn thing which is required for him to just focus on preparing Depending. great food yeah. right and uh, and provide him the customer base mm. so our corporate clients universities events food courts all of these are the customer base for him right yeah. so suddenly now just imagine the whole platform yeah. right yeah. we are going in the market we are encouraging all the food entrepreneurs passionate guys you know about yeah. food yeah. and we are giving them everything what is required for them to prepare the food and yeah. also giving them the business which is already there with us yeah. right yeah. so we want to build the app store for institutional food service and we want to disrupt this whole industry exactly. and build a beautiful ecosystem by enabling small and medium scale entrepreneurs and grow their business and in in the process of growing their business we grow and the entire ecosystem becomes a very beautiful ecosystem and that's what we want to build and everything will be technology driven a technology enabled so that we can do all of these things at scale Amazing. right so that's the ultimate vision 
uh, which we have. Got it. So this would be like a smart queue app that has all these entrepreneurs listed in and what kind of cuisines they offer and yes. how they would adapt to different where corporates could look at which cuisine yes. fits best for them. And yes. So it mobilizes the entire business of food aggregation into an app and has yes. that Yes. Wow. So that's, you heard it right from Krishna, straight, straight from the CEO that the vision is to go digital but create that ecosystem with the base and our core philosophy of food but create a digital marketplace around it which can disrupt the whole food and beverage at an institutional space. So on that note Krishna, we end the first segment of Green Deal Zaki featuring you. I would like to celebrate the first segment and congratulate you on this excellent Thank journey you. of taking through. We could give a round of applause to Krishna. For Thank you Zaki. Continuing my conversation with Krishna Vage, he's been splendid so far in answering all the questions put forward. He's spoken about the vision, the growth story and how it has been over the past seven years. But now it's time to turn the tables and see the wackier side, the lighter side of this human being who has a great vision for the company but also trying to understand him on the lighter side of life. That brings us to Krishna, the second segment, the Ask Me Anything segment. What we've done is we've curated a list of questions. We got a lot of questions, we had to filter them down. It was crowdsourced from the employees of SmartQ. A lot of great questions. So let's see how you take on these set of questions, which are very different from the ones you just answered. Sure. So let's get started on the rapid fire round with Krishna. So Krishna, the first question is, what is your earliest memory when you started your entrepreneurial journey? Okay. Uh, my earliest memory is about uh, how I met uh, Sachin. Sachin was my co-founder in Adding Value. How I met him, uh, uh, he he basically came out with an idea of uh, bumper sticker advertising, right? You know, he said that all the brands basically want logos of these brands to be yeah. pasted on. You know, uh, you know, they just want to showcase their logos, right? Yeah. How about we put these bumper stickers on all private cars which are there, yeah. you know, in Bangalore or across India, right? Why don't we do that? And honestly speaking, uh, he had come to consult with me uh, on how the idea is. And honestly, I thought that it's not a great idea, okay. right? Okay. And I was at that particular point in time, this is back in 2009, I was actually thinking of an e-commerce idea, right? Where uh, we can directly partner with distributors and sell the laptops and all of these electronic right. gadgets right. Um, to consumers directly so that they get it at lower cost. Uh, so I was more gungo about that particular idea. Uh, but when he shared that idea, you know, and you know, all ideas always intrigue me a lot, right? And um, I was just thinking about why is he only talking about doing a bumper sticker advertising? What if we cover the whole car with an advertisement? Mm. How would that be? Wow, okay. Right? And that kind of excited me a lot. I think, wow, that will be amazing. So I immediately went on Google and started searching, you know, uh, is there something like this, mm -hmm. right? And that's where I saw, I think there's a very deep connection of mine with UK, right? Uh, okay. I actually saw that there are a lot of taxis in UK, oh. the black taxis right, right. were covered beautifully with advertisements, okay. right? On the body of the car. On the body of the oh, car. Wow. Okay. I'm like, damn, this is so amazing, right? And it's like a moving billboard, right? You put an advertisement yeah. and it's running across the city in the traffic, you know, you can see it and stuff like that. I said, this is a great idea, right? Yeah. Now, so now it started to make sense to me. And then that's when I went back to Sachin. Okay. And I said, you know what? Let's do this, okay. right? Yeah, that's the earliest okay. memory of how we started adding values. Awesome. Cool. The next one is you and your wife, Jyoti had a food brand called Momo Street. Yes. So I would love to know whose idea was it? How did you manage that along with SmartQ and where, what happened to it uh, eventually? Right. Oh, great mm -hmm. question. So, uh, my wife, Jyoti, she loves Momos, <laughs> okay. right? And uh, uh, with her, even I started to love Momos because she used to go and eat and even I started eating along with her. So I absolutely loved Momos. So both of us loved Momos. Uh, but then we always had this challenge because uh, like we travel a lot, you know, inside the city or outside the city, yeah. we travel a lot. We love traveling. So, um, everywhere we go, we will find that momos are not as consistent or as good as right. some place, right. right? Probably in North Bangalore, you will have hardly like two or three places where you actually get good momos, Correct. right? 
so there is a lot of dissatisfaction in us ki, you know you don't get good momos everywhere right so we said hey what what if we start a brand like you know okay. uh, a momo brand and which has consistent taste across like how you when you go to mcdonalds you have consistent taste across the country correct, right correct. so similar way why can't we do that right. right and that's how the genesis of uh momo street happened that was a brand uh, right. momo street right. and we started off that business and again there is a deep connection between uk uh mm-hmm. you know corporate companies tech parks and you know, i think my life my entrepreneurial journey has always been around this mm-hmm. right and we started making momos and we used to supply to it companies oh, can you believe that wow. so into the cafeteria into the cafeterias wow. right so we used to sell it to the vendors Easy. uh mm-hmm. and they used to sell it further right so uh, that's how we did that but one thing i can i want to tell you that when we were running the operations of that particular yeah. business we realized that food business is one of the most toughest business to run and i think that's where a lot of empathy comes for our food partners, partners. right that and there's a lot of respect for them that you know producing great food consistently is an extremely difficult task running a food business is very very difficult right. there are so many leakage points there are so many failure points which are there in food business um, so we realized that we are not somebody who can run the operations at the same right. level yeah. and that's how you know both of us decided that you know it's better we do what we are really good at versus we trying to hustle and <laughs> run the tight operations on the food uh, business so right. that's how we moved out of momo street but yeah that that was the reason why we started momo street and we pursued but i guess it all added up for you with the food brand oh, the cafeteria course. space the technology the tech parks of course and i think that all that accumulated compounded and it gave us absolutely to absolutely so everything the dots connect in absolutely every amazing the next one is what is the most exciting thing that has happened to you throughout your journey at smart one very exciting thrilling thing you like wow this this is really happening so the most thrilling thing is that uh, sorry i'm going to take a little bit of time on this sure, right please. um i don't know of how many of you know this but uh, my first job was in quantum leap okay um and the founder of quantum leap still continues to be my inspirational figure and stuff like that i i did my job for about 8 months and uh, i'm sorry i'm going to say this but i didn't like doing my job right okay every day i used to curse myself that why am i going to the office uh, uh the reason being uh one was that the kind of people who were there in that particular organization um were very high performing people and the people who never used to perform really well i had the behavior towards them was very bad right mm. the humiliation which uh, was created for them and all of those things because of some people uh was really really poor and uh, honestly speaking that entire environment um and 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 also i am one i was one kind of person i'm st- i still feel that i am i am an introvert um uh, and when i was in that group right yeah. um i literally you know used to be scared to even speak anything because i was like you know i don't know what they're going to make fun of mm-hmm. right and that kind of led to a lot of things and i was actually the least performer in that particular company i'm not no kidding about it i was the least performer in that company um so uh, abhishek also if you look at the kind of person he is right he is a very humble guy yeah. um he was working in intel right he was just a chip component designer and his capability was so much right. and he was made to do only this much Correct. right and he was very dissatisfied with what he was doing right so both of us when we came together right we always dreamt of an organization where there is like people are not scared to come and talk to somebody else you know they are they are not scared of humiliation right they are not scared of politics uh they are not scared of uh, uh oh i am not good at showing off but somebody else is very good at showing oh, off right mm-hmm. and in corporates this happens a lot yeah. right the guy who shows off the most becomes the most successful grows person most. right yeah. grows the most uh so we really wanted to build an organization where there is no politics right clean hearted people uh not that people are you know humiliating each other right making fun of them unnecessarily right in a good way yes that's fine but not like 
if you find somebody's weakness and you're just you know pulling the leg so much that the, that the guy starts to feel that you know where am i you know i don't fit in this group and yeah. stuff like that right so i think what we are really what i am really really proud of is that we have been able to build that kind of an organization right we have been able to build an organization where people absolutely love to come interact with other people right they don't they don't have the fear of interacting with people there is no like near zero politics inside the organization right and there's no bureaucracy uh kind of a thing so i'm really really proud of of what we have been able to achieve uh in smart queue uh honestly i never knew that we can do it but i think it's subconsciously who we are what we felt as our pain point and the kind of people we attracted i think we ended up achieving this so so this must give you like shivers down the spine spine on a daily basis perhaps when you come in and you see wow we've achieved this so it's you say that the most thrilling part is what you see happening on a daily basis absolutely absolutely amazing but guys do you believe that krishna is an introvert that's something we might not agree on <laughs> so <laughs> i think offline i'll share a lot of stories and i'll tell you how how much an introvert i am <laughs> believe me or not i'm i'm an introvert as well and i find myself hard to explain to people because they think i'm an extrovert but i'm actually an introvert so but yeah that's a debate an ongoing conversation we can have <laughs> Um the next question Krishna is who's your role model who inspires you the most I know you said Steve Jobs but is that the same answer you would give or is there somebody else you would like to talk about So uh three people who have really inspired me a lot uh one is Steve Jobs uh which I have already spoken about second is Rajiv Talreja who is the founder of Quantum Leap where I work okay. that was where my first okay. job was and the third person is Dev Amritesh you know who was the uh Compass India CEO right Um so these three people have inspired me a lot. Uh I have always looked up to them as my mentors, yeah. right? Um yeah. So these three nice. people. Amazing. So at Smart Queue did you ever find a downturn or a moment which really made you feel sad or upset like you know something that really didn't feel good, you know like um uh, something that probably shackled you a bit or anything that you could think of? I think uh the moment when this covid struck right uh that was the most lowest point of my life you know uh, in smart queue journey uh even after taking 90% salary cut at leadership level uh we didn't know how are we going to make salary payments uh, to our people mm. right and i think that was the most uh, down biggest down time of my in, in, you know in this entire smart queue journey even the deal which we were trying to pursue with compass was put on pause because the whole world was going through this uh, pandemic right so with no uh, foresight of what is going to happen in the future it's completely dark and uh, that moment was the lowest point uh, of of mine uh, in smart queue journey i can really imagine that that's a very tough phase for all of us and while we hear companies laying off people and probably spending big amounts on other things other than people here our leadership decided to take big pay cuts so that we could sustain as a group so i think that deserves a round of applause to krishna and the leadership team for taking that stance for us to see through those tough phases and come through so that's amazing krishna thank you for that thank you zaki moving on krishna um how vital do you think mentors play a role in shaping one's career path and do you recommend that people who are new joinees take up mentors and how do you what do you what's your opinion on that uh sorry uh, my own journey with mentors have been very difficult honestly speaking um in my own opinion i have not been able to find lot of mentors in my life right honestly speaking and whenever i have got a mentor i have latched on to them like a leech honestly <laughs> right so uh, so th- but that is just about me right but i strongly feel that mentors are extremely important because which you and i might not be able to see today right. right it's like that you know even if virat kohli is the greatest cricket player he yeah. still needs a coach True. the reason he needs a coach is because he is not when he is playing the cricket right he is not able to see is he playing the shot correctly or not mm. but a coach who is sitting outside is able to see and able to guide and steer the person in the right direction right 
so that's where i feel that you know mentors are very much important mentors and coaches got it uh, because they can actually help you uh, navigate through all of these glass ceilings glass walls which we might have right and they can actually help you steer in the right direction so i strongly believe that we must find a mentor my my personal journey of finding mentors whom we, i truly look up yeah. to has been very difficult okay. uh, but whenever i found somebody i have literally latched onto them amazing okay uh krishna we also learned that you have an nlp certification and how instrumental has that been in your ability to take smart you so far uh, because it, it it it's something that has transformed you as a leader and helped you through the vision is what we feel right what are your thoughts on the that part Oh absolutely NLP has been a game changer in my life you know uh, and again thanks to Rajiv and Quantum Leap I basically learned NLP over there itself right. so they they gave me the training and they took me through the entire boot camp uh, to actually learn about NLP right so if you so NLP has actually helped me understand human behavior better mm. right it made me understand why people do what they do and why they do it right um uh so it has actually helped me understand the root cause mm. of uh how people operate right how our human mind behaves right and that has actually helped a lot in terms of uh understanding all our team teammates motivation right you know i right. you know it helps me go to the root uh, cause and understand that what is their problem statement yeah. or what is their motivation yeah. and try to give them what they want Yeah. right and yeah. they really really need sorry to use the word want mm. but what they truly need mm. you know i am able to understand that thing better and i am able to create uh, you know uh, uh, path for these guys uh, to be able to achieve those uh, needs of theirs I'm right sure. so yeah nlp has helped me a lot i credit a lot of thing to nlp for all the success we have had is uh, to nlp i recommend everyone should do nlp course amazing so even though the quantum leap journey of the job that you might have not like but the nlp angle yes. was maybe why you were there and yes. probably took that as a big learning from that yeah. absolutely absolutely i learned a lot in quantum leap by the way it's okay. just that the some people yeah and the some challenges which i had on a day to day basis were not right yeah. but rajiv was consistent inspiration there were other people who were very big inspirations for right. me and uh, also the learning which i was able to have Has. was was fabulous got it fabulous so you just spoke about employees what they need and their motivations what is the first thought that comes to your mind when it comes to making employees happy right uh i think uh, what our people need is uh, like the way i have always been talking about right they need a clean environment to work in right where they don't feel pressurized they don't feel um uh you know somebody is uh, coming to you know attack their profession their job or yeah. stuff like that yeah. they need to feel secure uh people need to feel that they have the uh, path to grow in the in the organization and they're consistently learning something new yeah. right i feel that is the most important thing then of course their life goals you know how do we build plans to make people achieve their life goals mm. right and you know i have really understood that thing really well about all the initial team who joined you know I, unfortunately i'm not able to go and talk to every single person and understand their motivation but we are seeing our managers can do that uh, but uh, at least our initial team uh, core team you know I, i have really been able to understand what they truly want and continue to give them what they want and how yeah. they can achieve that yeah. uh i think that has uh, you know i feel that is going to create a lot of happiness, happiness. and that will what will continue to create a lot of happiness, happiness. amazing uh, krishna this question is quite tricky and i uh, would love to see your answer on this after spending these many years in the industry and after attaining this level of stardom what takes you to keep going on a day to day basis stardom i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> the employees do think so and it's from the employees so i think they see you at that stardom level but it's the love of you all uh see the uh the reason i started off business was like the way i was telling you right in quantum leap i always felt that my voice was not heard uh, i always felt that i was uh suppressed i felt that it might not be consciously people doing it but yeah. like the way i said i am an introvert right and i really couldn't barge into it and i say no no this is my opinion and i'm putting it on yeah. the table right 
so i couldn't really explore myself you know i was very closed mm. and i felt that i have lot of ideas i should be able to explore and stuff like that right and that's how i started off uh, with the business Got it. right and business for me is a journey of self discovery mm. for me business is not about uh, money it is not about just people for me it's a journey of self discovery right. you know and every day i spend running the business i'm actually self discovering myself yeah. right and when i look back you know I, i'll be very honest you know I, i was afraid to do sales no. i was afraid to go and meet clients right i was afraid to go and talk to some unknown people right i still i'm very scared of going to conferences and talking to strangers right like how people very easily go and you know shake hands and they say you know i oh hi you know they start uh, having that conversation i'm not good at that at all again it's my introvert inver, introvert nature of mine which just pushes me down right so uh, um sorry i lost my chain of thought no no problem what what keeps you ticking yeah. like you said yeah. self discovery and right. that keeps right you, so. right so so it so the whole journey of mine the you know running business is all about self discovery exploring myself because when you get into business there's nobody who's watching you right yeah yeah every decision you take is what is going to decide that you're going to win or you're going to lose Correct. right and that basically is the most exciting part of mine like you know whenever i look back i'll be like oh i could do this also uh-huh. Oh I can do this also. I'm like oh I can do this also. So I have been able to discover myself over this journey and I'm continuing to you know discover myself. So the journey of self discovery is what keeps me ticking uh, and you know solving new new problems. I used to think that I am very poor in problem solving. Right and every time new problem comes up it's a lot of excitement for me you're like oh how do we solve this problem mm. how do we scale smart queue to you know so many countries how do we scale our yeah. food aggregation yeah. business so solving those problems is gives me a lot of excitement and that is what is continuing to keep me tick wow. so right? basically finding yourself every day is is a new day for you to look forward to what Absolutely. what will i know something new about myself today exactly and i guess that aligns with our culture of Uh, how employees have explored evolved and emerged maybe rubs off from this personality trait of yours where you feel you s- discover yourself and i think the same thing kind of rubs off on us where we also get the chance to explore evolve and emerge as well so that's right. amazing krishna the next question is say something about the corporate food tech industry in one line in one line in one line uh, extremely broken highly unorganized okay being the ceo of a food tech company are you a foodie too if yes what is your favorite f- go to food Oh, I am a big time foodie. Uh I love my food and the food I really like is anything with regards to paneer, right? Okay. <laughs> Being a vegetarian it's my chicken, okay. right? So yeah. I love anything with paneer. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever been surprised looking at your team's calendar? I mean your team's calendar which, which have you ever been surprised or shocked? My your team. Acha, your, my calendar. Yeah, your okay. Calendar. Oh yeah, I have been uh, uh, I have been shocked that there will be time when I'll not have time to breathe even go to the washroom <laughs> okay. and there will be time when I have all the time in the world, right? Oh, yeah. So uh, so yeah, so that looking at my calendar it's some days extremely busy, some days not much work. So yeah, yeah. I have seen that. So you've seen the extremes and yeah. I can surprise you. That is my surprise. Surprise. <laughs> and part of the self discovery also. Yes. <laughs> Uh since you have traveled many countries <coughs> excuse me what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the following USA marketing UK I have not traveled to UK oh you haven't <laughs> okay south africa beautiful sri lanka good but uh, no veg food <laughs> okay and speaking about uk you could say something because you said you had a lot of connection with uk in your right. journey so is there anything you would like to attribute to uk even though you haven't visited um I would say their ability to uh, grow as a country without having any resources right okay. so yeah If green tea with zaki can be renamed what could it be renamed to <laughs> Whiskey with zaki okay <laughs> Okay Baskar we can consider that for the next one <laughs> If you could try a new sport what would you try uh, any sports that you would like you that you follow closely or if you like to try a sport 
uh, I love cricket. I love to play cricket. Uh, but if I have to explore a new sport, that will be badminton. Okay. Are you hoping that India Pakistan final for this? Oh, absolutely. That will be insane. Looking forward to Looking it. Forward. Praying for it. <laughs> I guess all of us echo the same thing and we are also looking forward to that. Hope India wins versus England today. If you could travel back in time, what age would you start with? 17. 17. Any reason? I started off my working career at 17. Oh, okay. As an entrepreneur, as your own thing or with? Um, no, I started working in a network marketing company. Uh, so, me, Rakesh, all of us were working for a network marketing company. Oh, okay. So we started. I started off at the age of seventeen. So, okay. yeah. so you know Rakesh from way back. Yes, way back. Oh, okay. We Rakesh and I go long back. Oh, okay. uh, the next question is: What is your strategy to increase company profits in the next three to five years? Uh, like the way I spoke about, you know, uh, our vision of building app store for institutional catering. Uh, we uh, we are heavily focused on profitable growth. Uh, if you see the kind of contracts we are bagging, the kind of clients we are getting. Yeah. All of these clients are from day one, they are profitable accounts for us. Uh, if they're not profitable accounts, we do not take up those accounts. Right. So that is the you know structure we are following. Um, and the way we will increase the overall profitability is once we scale our business, right? So yeah. if you see the kind of contracts we are bagging, we're scaling really, really fast. And once we have the great volume and we have great supply ecosystem, is when we will start to make tons of money, and yeah. that's how we will become profitable. Understood. Amazing. That's really good to know, Krishna. And the last question of the segment is, what is your ultimate goal for SmartU besides the profitability and besides the whole revenue and all of the things? What is your ultimate aspirational goal that when you, when you see it at the end of the day, you're like, wow, this has been done. This has come through at the eyes of other people. So, I think uh, the culture we all have built over here, right? Uh, the kind of people we have got over here. I think the biggest problem statement, and I told the same thing to Captain Muddy also when we were when we were recruiting him. He asked me this question: "What is your biggest problem?" I said, "My biggest problem or my biggest nightmare is that will we be able to scale this culture uh, at mm. the scale we are looking at? You know, we will be about thousand people in the next eighteen to twenty-four months. I'll not be surprised if we are thousand people." Mm -hmm. um, at thousand people scale, can we continue to scale our culture or not? Right, and that is my biggest nightmare. Uh, can we continue to build an organization which is so pure, so good, uh, and you know, without getting the head weight of the scale and we being a very large company and right. all of that? Right. How can we continue to be humble? Uh, how can we continue to attract good people right. and continue to uh, scale this music band culture we have got? Yeah. Right, and <laughs> keep putting up a great. Show out nice. there, right? You know, I think if we can do that at scale, uh, then I can basically say that you know we have created Amazing. the best company on this planet, best family out there, Amazing. right? And I'll be very very satisfied. Superb. That's such a beautiful way to say it. And in the segment, Krishna basically wants to keep it simple, even though we grow and scale at larger heights. But how we could still keep our core values, our humbleness, our groundedness intact, and the culture that we've created in such a beautiful way, and the band keeps playing the same song, the same music. And we don't add new lyrics that go against what we have created so beautifully for ourselves. Absolutely. So that brings us to the end of the second segment, the Ask Me Anything segment, the rapid fire. Krishna, you've been a great sport answering all these questions and being very open and vocal about your goals, vision and other questions that came your way. I really appreciate you taking time off again and doing this with us. Truly humbled to have this experience with you and thank you again. Thank Round of you applause so much, Zaki. Thank you so much. Thank you, Krishna. So we finished the two segments with Krishna and now is a surprise segment with him. It's the first time that's going to happen at a Green Tea with Zaki episode. We look forward to see what the surprise is. It's hopefully easy for both of us. Uh, and it's not too uh, nerve wracking when we start doing it. So we look forward to the third segment, the activity segment. And people who want to join in and witness this can please feel free to join the, the setup that we have here. Thank you. It's a one of a kind segment we're doing today, which is preparing food uh, with Krishna, and we're going to test and see who's a better chef. So please, may I have the rules uh, to announce so that Krishna and I both know what's in store for us. So, Krishna, I've got the rules, which I'll read out. Uh, we will get seven minutes to prepare the dish, three minutes to plate it, and for plating, we can go around the office and pick whatever we want to make it more appetizing and look presentable if, if that's an option. 
we have to name our dish and lastly something which are very good at is make an elevated pitch to the judge who is nivedan okay yeah rules are clear yeah clear nivedan thank you for joining the green tea with akhi episode you look really nice today <laughs> he is already started his elevator pitch <laughs> So uh, we are going to go then. Shall we begin? Uh, Timer set. Yes. Okay. So uh, what do we have to prepare? We are making uh, bel puri. Uh, bel puri. And hopefully uh, we cut the vegetables without harming ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, vegetables are safe. <laughs> All right. So let us know when we can begin. I'm ready. Yeah. On the key. Yeah. Seven minutes. Let's start. Start. Okay. <laughs> A few moments later. I think this is the first time in the history of cooking that onions will cry for us. Chhoda ho jayegi. Later. Skills. Chef skills. Do we get some chutney or not? No. Later that same evening. Eventually, ten, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now we are doing plating. You plate it. That is the key. Okay, that is the key. Okay, that is the key. So we just finished seven minutes of preparing some beautiful looking dishes. Uh, with a lot of color and flavor, and we put our heart and soul into this dish. <laughs> and the judges' valuable insights helped us a lot. And I had asked the judges a lot, judge a lot, especially who is no other than Nivedan, the head of supply at SmartView. Nivedan, welcome to the set of Green Tea with Sakhi Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, we have also decorated our plates and. Are ready to present to Nivedan our creations or work of art. I would like to say. Um, so, would, should we go with Krishna first to explain his dish to Nivedan? Yes. yes. That's yes. so smart of the idea. <laughs> should we go with Krishna? No other option. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Krishna, stage is yours. Stage is yours, please. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Do this. Do you want to finish up painting, or you want to go ahead and explain? Okay, we'll go ahead and explain. There is an option where you can just go. Anywhere across it, and still bring something and use it completely to look, make it look a little more attractive. <laughs> 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 okay, that. You can. Yeah, bring something. <laughs> bring something. <laughs> Three hours later. Say how it looks. What's your first thing? Let's see what they're going to bring. But as of now, it looks like this. I still there's only opportunity of anyone else being the judge. And Krishna's plate looks like this. So basically, Krishna has done a better job in chopping the vegetables after he cooked. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So the reason you are going to have an amazing delivery, don't go by the looks of it. You should never judge a book by its cover, right? But this is going to be very, very delicious. These pop fries are from the place where it is actually produced, right? Where uh, in Maharashtra. <laughs> <laughs> it is from there, and the spices I have added. Vahtaj. Just making it very, very tasty and very delicious. It's a very beautiful delicacy. You this. Yeah, I have. See, I'm still surviving. So the entire thing was recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I tasted it. Honestly, it's really, really nice, and uh, I'm, I'm sure this is the best, best meal we have ever had. Because I think I take off the chosen thing. I don't want to risk it. <laughs> yeah. So, Nivedan, this uh, is a very puri that's called the smiling puri. Which basically you see, it has these eyes here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it goes and the smile here. Yeah. So basically, when you eat it, you remember happiness. You will feel pleasant, even though it might not taste because the first time, but the whole hard work that's gone into it would reminisce you of your childhood and add everybody for the first time. First time so much. It actually lasts for at least about three to four hours. Is what is. <laughs> Let's say I'll be there or. <laughs> <laughs> and also for your taste buds, because we, I don't know how your taste buds are, I've just kept some jaggery on the side in case it's too spicy. I like. So just to balance the taste out, it will help a lot. So what did you do with the green tea? The green tea yeah, has just been a little bit of a garnishing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The way the uh, English people enjoy the real puri, it's a it's a it's a fusion between the English real puri and the Indian. <laughs> so this is just uh, basically the news of the Send your article you laugh for this. <laughs> but this right on an article. Right right. But this green tea is just a garnishing to go with the whole ambience of what is it. <laughs> the moment that of truth. Your body ambulance comes. It's a key. Privileged the way that. Good. Good. Ten seconds later. It's spicy. <laughs> 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 which part? Take the ice. Okay, which part should I take? <laughs> <laughs> take the ice, I should. You know, peel it out. Yeah, you have to take the ice, one part of the ice. But doesn't that make it sad? It's a very emotional ice, fun by the way. Something after the ice and before the shoes. Okay. <laughs> 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 just this. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would require a more green tea. Of course, right? If I have to choose a winner, is that correct? Yeah. Not because of the height and stuff, but <laughs> <laughs> because of the way it's wet, plating, and uh, sorry. It's okay. It's a big Krishna, in terms of taste, plating, everything, Krishna will be the winner. Thank you. <laughs> I would have been the winner if it was only him being this. Father is a bitch up. So, good luck. Good presentation and pitch by Zaki and uh, good going by Krishna. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you so much, Nivedan, for judging this. And obviously, Krishna said, Yeah, 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 we are not without any doubt. Uh, so, Krishna, as he started to say that he's very bad at this, but evidently not, he can actually put up a great deal. And being the CEO of a food tech company, he's just shown that food is in his blood and he can cook a great deal. <laughs> on that note, uh, it was an amazing episode. It was so much fun. Krishna, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I really enjoyed. Uh, thank you so much, Zaki, for hosting the show. And I'm sure this property, Green Tea with Zaki, is going to be massive. Thanks. So, already, all uh, there are a lot of fans who are there across the globe now. I'm sure uh, the entire couple group is going to just thoroughly enjoy you. Uh, hosting this show and this is just an amazing show so thanks for your creativity and all the work all the team members are putting behind this but it's a great show thank you so much thank you so much the end of the fourth episode of Green Day with Dhaki with Krishna who has been an amazing sport and has given us his valuable time to do this uh, with him. Moving on to greater episodes and more amazing people and candidates who join us for the future episodes of Green Day with Dhaki. Thank you so much everyone for putting this great show together. It's really appreciated. And, and to, to find, uh, finally say, uh, if you enjoy this episode, please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel or share it on your LinkedIn profiles. We would love to spread the word about Krishna's great words uh, during this interview and have more uh, information spread of us what we do as fun. So thank you so much. So guys, like, share and subscribe for more fun elements and get to know more about SmartQ. Thank you. Now you should try his <laughs> <laughs> I will try. For sure. Be behind the scenes. Hey, they didn't think they were. With green tea. Ha 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 ha!